Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me this morning. I'm just going to focus my camera in a little bit there. Hi, Julie. Hi, Dave. Thanks for joining me. That's wonderful. You can ask me anything on a live stream. That's the beauty of it. I'm going to first talk about the stuff that I've got ready in front of me here. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, okay, hopefully you can all hear me. If you can uh, type in the chat box that you can hear me, that would be great. Um, a <laughs> small moment of panic just there. Uh, so I've got two sheets of ash, watercolour paper, and I thought I would start with the really easy background. Oh, thanks, Julie, that's great. Which is a wet in wet background that you do on a sheet of um, non porous um, background. So, this is a piece of acrylic there, but it will work on anything that is um, non porous because we're going to put down wet paint and create two really fast backgrounds. The colours that I'm going to be using match my subject. So, I've gone out and picked some leaves. Leaves are also something that you can draw from your mind's eye. So if you don't have a real subject, you could get an image or you can just make it up or follow me. I don't mind which one at all. Uh, the three colours that I've got this morning are Thalo Turquoise, Quin Gold, and this is a schminky Horridam super granulating colour called Vulcan Brown. The reason why I've chosen Thalo Turquoise is I know it's a stainer. So that's a perfect kind of colour to have in your background. So having something like um, Moon Glow is going to move all over the place. So Moon Glow, not a great choice for your background. But something like any Thalo colours are going to be beautiful staining colours that will work brilliantly and stay in the background. Continuing on with my uh, supplies, I've got... Um, different sizes in masking tape. I'm thinking I will use the really fat one on the outside and this is how I'll get the double border. I've got this super thin masking tape but if you've, if you've only got this size masking tape you could make it work, you could tear it down, you could get an abstract border in fact with an internal border that's um, a different um, it's got a lovely rough edge to it so easy to compensate <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't happen to have three types of tape. I've also got three watercolour pencils and I thought for one of the paintings we might draw straight into that lovely wet background but the other one will dry and come back in and do some negative painting. So all sorts of wonderful watercolour techniques today. The other thing I thought I might draw with, and I forget to use these all the time, are these Winsor & Newton crayons. They're beautiful quality and this one is called Olive Green. So I thought, how perfect. I'm trying really hard to keep to a really earthy base in my paints. I'm going to try that in the crayon and then I'm trying that with my pencils. So I'm trying the whole time to keep a um, limited palette. The problem I find if you get a whole stack of pencils and you open them up is that it's like a lolly box and or a chocolate box where you want to have a taste of everything and I find if I limit the palette, so choose the colours first, put the pack away, then you've got an automatic limited palette. So easy to come back and add more colour later on if you want to. I've also got a spray bottle so that I can spray these lovely backgrounds. Okay, I'm going to move some stuff out of the way, out to here. Oh, that's the other thing I've got is some granulating, uh, no, iridescent medium. I thought I might put a little bit, a bit of that into the um, mix and then I'll get a lovely sheen, a reflective sheen on the background. And I do find this is excellent for backgrounds. It does not move much at all. So I'm going to put all these things out of the way, even the um, pieces of paper. And I'm going to put the colour straight onto my board. So it's an acrylic board. My camera is going to have trouble um, focusing because there's nothing there for it. There, that's a bit better. Okay. This is the super granulating uh, schminky. Now, can you see? I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see this because. 
people often ask about that. Just going to zoom right in. Zoom in a little further. Further, further, further. Right, so you can see that the gum arabic has separated out from the paint. It's quite common in transportation that the gum arabic seems to separate from the paint. It's not a sign that it's a problem at all. What I'm going to do is just mix it in. What it does mean, however, is there's going to be a greater ratio of gum arabic to paint. So will that matter? Yeah, I don't know. The phthalo turquoise, um, it'll just be shiny. So no, it won't matter. <laughs> Answering my own question there. I'm going to put out a small amount of phthalo turquoise because I do find it can dominate. Easy to add more. And then I've just got a note of a warm yellow. So two beautiful earthy colours. And then I've got this beautiful phthalo turquoise. I tend to use these brushes a lot, black gold 311. Wet my brush and get that phthalo turquoise going first. It's very blue. It's a blue green, but it's so beautiful. Then I'm going to get all that gum arabic mixing in with the Vulcan brown. And here's my um quinacridone gold over there. I'm just going to mix these first because I know they're going to completely dominate the quinacridone gold. So I'm going to try and give it a little bit of space up here. It's a bit of water all around, all around. So I need enough paint to put a background on two different um, pieces of paper. Okay, mixing in, it is going to a beautiful green, but you can see that that um, colour has dominated again. I'm just going to get a clean brush for the quinacridone gold. I'd like to get a little bit of this yellowy gold kept separate, so I'm not going to mix that in. Mix it in with this green over here, that is. Okay, dump that brush. Now, more brown because I really do want it to go to the green side. So I'm putting in way more brown. So the ratio there is like practically eight to one, eight lots of brown to the phthalo turquoise. The turquoise can really dominate. Okay, I don't mind if it's quite on the brown side, my background, that'll be fine. It's looking quite grey. That might be absolutely beautiful for the green uh, leaves over the top. Okay. Mm, yeah, no, I'll just add a tiny bit more turquoise, just the tiniest bit. Maybe I'll just add it in here only. Quinacridone and gold is quite expensive too. So it's just looking incredibly blue. I need that quinacridone gold. So I'm going to pretty much squeeze out a big dob, see if I can change the colour to green. See how much impact the quinacridone gold is going to have. Oh, Dave says, can you zoom back out a bit? Sure. Sure can. How about like that? That's showing that's a bit too far, isn't it? Back in a bit. There. Thanks for saying that. That's excellent. All right. Okay. Now we've got some greens happening over here. I've got some really yellowy greens up there, some beautiful olivey greens, and definitely in the zone of gum leaves, so that's really cool, and some blues there, so I think that's really beautiful. Okay, get rid of that. Now, this is the upside of my ash paper. I wrote my name on the back so that I would remember which was the back and which was the front. Of course, with, um, uh, with the beautiful um, ash, you can use both sides. Now, I'm going to spritz the edge because I want it to be quite light on the edges. Don't want anything dark there, but I don't mind a little, oh, a few drips might look rather beautiful. Hey, Liz, how are you? Lovely that you've joined us. I'm going to place that there. 
touch, touch, touch. You can press as lightly or as heavily as you want. It's completely easily. Oh, that's beautiful. I've got a really dark bit of green there. Now we know that watercolor dries 10 to 15% lighter. So um, that might be quite lovely. It might go to a mid-tone by the time it's finished. There's some light bits here. Now I'm going to be taping the sides of either this one or the other one. So I might spray that edge here just so that I don't get any white bits on the edge in case that ends up under the tape. All right, I'm just going to set this one aside over here. I think I might dry a little bit there. I've got a towel. I'm just going to set that one there. I'll zoom out a little bit further so you can see that. And over that way, there we go. All right, now you can see what that one looks like. And I've sat it on the towel and the extra drips are coming off into that corner. That's quite good because we do want it to dry while we're painting this morning. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. It's off the um, paint, off the <laughs> acrylic. Okay, here's number two. And um, I think that I will spritz it in the same way. I really liked that. So I'm spritzing the edges. Spritz the edges, spritz the edges, edge, 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 and a tiny bit in the bit in the middle. Okay, switch it over and straight down. This one I might rub around a little bit. Get um, so this one's going to have some white bits on it, but maybe if I do a little more contact, oh, making a mess. How's this one looking? Oh, that's beautiful as well. So I've got a range of colors there. Camera's worked out how to focus, that's good. Tiny little white bits up there, um, but that's nice. But I don't want it on the edge in case this ends up being the one that I um, take down. Okay, so I've got two beauties there. What I would love to do is just use up all the rest of this paint and make more of these. I could just spend the morning doing that, but we do need to move on to an actual painting. So I'm going to get rid of this board. Uh, normally I'd just clean it all up, but I've got another board underneath and I'm going to slide this one out. Put Oh, I'll just drip it onto there, I think. Put down my two beautiful abstract backgrounds that are produced within minutes. Put my towel back because that's really useful. Dump this board and now I need to decide. I'm going to get the hairdryer and dry one. One I'm going to draw straight into while it's beautiful and wet and one I'm going to draw into later. So I think I'm going to, right, this is the one I'm going to keep. I think because it's really beautiful and quite consistent as a background, that one might be better. So I'm going to move that one over here just to let it air dry. So what I mentioned we're going to do is the usual warm-up, which is a continuous line drawing. That's when you need a couple of pencils. So I'm going to do it with watercolour pencils. That's not a watercolour pencil. There, I've got three watercolour pencils. I thought it might be quite lovely with the white. And then the other thing that I've got is this crayon. It's a Winsor & Newton olive green watercolour crayon. It's pure watercolour. Okay, I'm going to get some of my leaves here, just, <laughs> they're so wonderfully uh, eaten. I'm just going to get one for a continuous line drawing. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to start with the white. I wondered what the white would be like. So I'm going to start there. I might point it down. And in fact, I'll move that a little further. I like an angle. I like a um, drawing that has a bit of dynamism, 
dynamism in it by having a lovely angle. It's going to be a little bit hard to hold the paper, but we'll do the best we can. Would be interesting to tape it down wet. I wonder what will happen. All right, just thought of a lovely extra experiment. I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to use this little thin tape and put a border on with masking tape straight onto wet paper. Might do something lovely. You have to handle this um, super thin tape quite carefully. You'll see that as I'm removing it, as in removing it, removing it from the roll, that I was handling it quite carefully. And that's because it moves. Once it's off the um, roll, it loses its strength and it can warp really easily. Probably doesn't matter that much. It, all right, that's going to make it my job a lot easier for uh, the drawing. All right, I've got this crayon and I'm going to use it because I just never used them. And I'm going to come straight in with a leaf. It's going to start up there. And I'm going to include all these beautiful little irregularities. So in a continuous line drawing, I just broke one of the first <laughs> rules, which is to not take your pencil off the page until you've finished your line. But anyway, I'll put the, uh, as we know, it's art and it's your art, so you always get to do exactly as you please. Okay, that's nice. So drawing on the tape is, is moving it, so that's a bit tricky. That line is quite lovely. I'm going to um, enhance it, put in maybe some veins with this. This is a Albrecht Dura watercolour pencil. It's the Magnus range, so they're really fat. And I find I, I'm quite heavy-handed in the way that I draw. So I find that by using these fat ones, it hurts my hand list. It doesn't stop me being quite heavy handed. Ah, uh, <laughs> Viva said, yeah, you've made your own rules. And Julie said, well, if you weren't live, we wouldn't have known. Hey, that's true. Because when you're editing videos, you, um, I cut stuff out all the time. I cut out bloopers because <laughs> they're, they tend to be a little bit boring. And I'm always going for something that's fast in the when I'm doing videos that aren't live. Uh, when you do it live, though, it's a little more nerve wracking. OK, I'm going to this white pencil. I've got these beautiful white marks here. So I wonder if I might draw down into here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing down there. And out a little. Yep, it's focused, so that's good. It's still focused. I have to check on that camera. Now, that's the other sort of thing that I edit out, is checking on the camera all the time. Okay, that little crayon just did such a beautiful job. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it already. So with the white, I want to know whether or not it will draw into this green here. So I'm going to turn the leaf this way. So I've got one leaf that way. I could put a leaf that way or, oh, that's a nice idea. How about this way? So I'm just going to hold the leaf this way. Ooh. So I'm going to be careful on the tape because I know now that it moves it. And just do another continuous line drawing. It's not really white, but it is moving the paint around. That's kind of nice. Gentle on the tape because it moves. Keep it going over into this corner. <laughs> Drawing on my board, but uh, right, come back up. Indent. I think it's doing a really similar job to the crayon, funnily enough. But because um, it's not really putting down much paint. And back over to here. If I go over it, does it make any difference? No. 
All right, what does green look like? Let's give it a beautiful center stem. Yeah, okay, same. Well, I love saying to students who they often come up and they go, do you think that I could? And my favorite thing to say is, oh, go try it. Because that's you having an original idea. As soon as you say to yourself, do you think I could? Then do it, practice it, work it out. It's lovely. Okay, I've got this pencil and I can't resist trying this color as well. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Okay, now I've got one, two, and I love the idea of a third leaf. These haven't touched. So I think one thing I could do is put in a leaf that makes them touch or I could continue the three separateness and put it up there. Or I could have one come in like that and down low or maybe up high. Yeah, actually, that's quite beautiful. I'll do it up high and maybe not interrupt. Okay, now I'm going to hold the leaf this way. And so it's quite dry up the top there. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Oops, there. <laughs> out a little more there okay now you can see the top so up here the paper's quite dry so the color's coming straight through that's lovely and come over here now I could draw over the top or I could go into the background I think I'll go into the background include these beautiful eaten bits they're the bits I like the most on any leaf is the bits that the grub came along and ate. There's my stem, it comes down. I'm going to try and draw on the tape, but it's it's moving it. And the tape hasn't adhered at all up here, so I'm going to deal with that next. All right, lovely little break in the leaf, come down behind here. I might go straight down and then straight down over here, put in the, draw carefully on the tape and come down this way, this way, and that way. All right, how's that looking? I think this will be quite lovely to come back to later and uh, do a little bit of negative painting on that one too. It's um, barely attached here, which is excellent. I'm just going to zoom out so you can see. Oh, thanks, Liz. Love your encouragement. Okay, lift this one carefully because I'll just leave those bits of tape in place for now. Okay, imagine if I get lots of confidence doing this. I might do it every Wednesday. Okay. Put this over here. This one is nearly dry. Okay, I'm going to stick with this leaf. It's rather lovely. I think on this one, I'll just move it back over again. I think on this one, part of what happens in the first drawing is you sort of start to work out your composition. So these are way too lined up. I'm not loving how they're just replicas of each other. But what's beautiful is the one behind. So if I continue with this front one on this one, then I'll change the second leaf and I'll keep the second background leaf. So that's quite nice. So this is really, really, really damp. Oh, thanks, Julie. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm going to just dry this a little bit because I'd like to draw on it with pencil. One second while I grab my heat gun. So this will only take a moment because it's been drying by itself. And I've realized, you know, that drying by itself is actually way better than speed drying because it's given it all this extra texture. Or oh, that could be the sneaky Vulcan Brown giving it the texture. Oh, oh, that's rather wonderful. Okay. It's coming up as, you know, as you're drying it, it's turning upward, so that's all right. Just going to dry the back a little bit. If you keep the back lovely and clean, you don't have to worry about um, 
what I've done. If you keep the back beautiful and clean, you can use the back. Quite a good idea. I wrote my name on because I knew that I might forget stuff because this is live and I can't edit the video later on. All right, how's that? A little bit damp there. I want it bone dry. I want the tape to stick really, really, really well. How's that? A little bit damp just there. Beautiful. Okay. I have to make sure that my heat gun stands up, otherwise it'll burn my table. It gets really hot. So I mentioned at the beginning that I'm going to use these two tapes, and that's why I needed it to be really, really dry. Now, I'm going to do a double border. So I made a video on the uh, a double border, and the, there was a lot of interest in it. So I thought, right, I need to do that again because it's quite easy but I thought I needed to vary it and that's why I came up with this idea. I'm putting on a fat, fat border. I reckon the border there is about two centimetres, so it's about a centimetre off to the side. It's not exactly straight. So if you're way more careful than me, you could take more time than I'm taking and you could measure it. Wouldn't be a bad idea in case this really works out because it might look a little bit odd when you frame it if this frame <laughs> isn't uh, lovely. But I'm just going to keep going because not only is this YouTube live, but actually I, I like to just keep going. I'm always into what's fast. Okay, I can dump the big one, run my fingers over it, and particularly at these egress points there. I learnt that word recently, egress, because a few of my uh, friends have had problems with bathrooms leaking. And the plumber refers to it as points of egress. It's where the water gets in. And certainly we've, I know we've all, um, <laughs> well, I don't know that we all have, but I've had problems with bathrooms leaking um, in every house I've lived in. Okay, first border. Now the super thin one for the second border. Up to there. You'll notice on the video version that I did of this that there's not going to be crosses in the corner, but I can't avoid that on this one. This little light tape is not going to allow me to tear it off and make beautiful edges. And again, I'm into fast and this is live. So if you're more particular than me, again, you could take your time to make some beautiful edges. And you'll see me do that on the video. It's a very recent one and it's called double border grevillea because my subject was grevillea. So in this one, I'm changing it up in a few ways. I'm changing the border. I'm going to have beautiful color under my borders. And I've changed it also because I'm doing gum leaves, not grevillea flowers. I'm just continuing to run my finger and or my fingernail under, uh, over the tape, but particularly at those points of egress, which are in the corners. Okay. Right, that should be enough. I'm going to use this same leaf. I do have more leaves. I went out, um, partly what inspired me to do gum leaves was that I went um, on a walk and we've got this gum tree out the front and there was this big branch hanging down. I thought, I need to go and cut that off so it doesn't hit people in the face when they walk along. And then I realised this morning that I knew exactly what to go and cut. Now, first decision. Ah, oh, thanks, Tammy. You love the double border. All uh, right, do I want to continue um, that that way? Nah, I think I'll go this way. Or 
Yeah, I, there's something about this first leaf that is bothering me. It might be fixed up on the when we come back to this one and paint it negatively or, oh, no, I know, I'll switch to a smaller leaf. Ah, that's a nice idea. I might put that one there and then the big one can go in behind it. So then I'll have a little bit like a Y going on, in which case I need will need a leaf that comes up. Okay, having extra leaves is awesome because that just helped me to decide on my composition. I'm going to use a pencil this time. The disadvantage in using um, pencils, particularly the ones I have, is that they're really, really fat. And I quite like the idea on this one that there'll be a, a fine line. Okay. I think <laughs> it's a little tiny caterpillar. Sorry about this caterpillar. I don't, it's one of those little inchworm funny things. I'm really sorry to squish you. Well, no, I'm not. You can't stay on my art. Okay, I'm going to come down like this. And then... Very tempting just to, yep, I think I'll trace it, come down. I'm trying to do a light touch on this one because I, I don't want to have to, no, it's too hard to trace. I don't want to have to erase much paint, much pencil, <laughs> because it will erase some of the paint I find. That point, I'm going to extend and have it go off the page. Then it comes back up and comes around to here. And there's a bit of a hole. Some of these holes are going to be great. I think I'll invent some holes. This will come down. There's a lovely eaten part here. I'll come down. And there's eaten bits here and to here. It goes right up to the stem and then comes back out and there's this stem comes down there. I'm going to invent more holes because that will just mean that I'm leaving those lovely background marks. I think I'll put one in there. Oh, it's a bit matchy-matchy, so I'm going to change it and put it down to there, which means I need to erase that line. So, you know the part where I said I don't want to erase much many lines? I'm erasing it now because I know when I, um, now you know it's been eating the leaves. That is exactly right, except I'm pretty sure that was a uh, baby version of what's been eating the leaves because, I mean, that little tiny thing, could it do that much? Actually, that's very interesting you would say that because on the back of the leaves, are these little tiny marks. Uh, so that is definitely the baby caterpillar doing that. They're not babies for all I know. All right, we've got this beautiful leaf happening here. One. Now I might paint, negatively paint it, and then do another one on top. Ooh. Yep. Okay. Decision made. Alrighty. I've got this quinacridone gold, and um, it's actually on my palette, I'm going to put this sponge over here. Usually I like to leave a little gap down here uh, and that's where I wipe my brush, but I've got a sponge because I don't have a gap so that I could fit everything into the screen. This is Quinn Gold and I'm adding more to my palette. I need to zoom out a little further so you can see that. I need to put more in my palette. Oh, this one. Ah, there. I like fresh paint a lot. It makes me faster. Okay. Clean brush and I'm going to get the um, Quinn Gold activated. There's some already in the palette. It, by the way, Quinn Gold reactivates like a dream. This is a Winsor & Newton Quinn Gold and it's really old. So it would have been one of those original ones because... Um, Apparently, the original source of quinacridone gold ran out. This is Thalo Turquoise. It does live permanently on my palette. 
I'm pretty sure it's this one here. I'm going to squeeze some in. You'd think I'd know, but never mind. I'm just going to squeeze some in there, touch it, and put a bit there, and then touch this. Is that the same? Yes. Okay, I put it in the right spot. That's also the sort of thing I would edit out if I was not live. Okay, here's that beautiful green and the other colour that I've been using. Oh, I totally forgot to add some iridescent medium. Mm, I'm not going to add it now. I liked the idea that it was in the background, so I'm going to forget that. Here's my Quin Gold, and I'm going to add a small amount. Look at that beautiful brownie green. Yeah, that's the colour that I want, or it's in the way, a little more green. So by adding the smallest amount of the phthalo turquoise, I can get to a beautiful olive green. You could just go out and buy olive green. Of course, that's easy to do as well. Okay, I want a little lighter, so a little more water. If I add it down here, I'll get a light tone and a mid-tone. So just going lovely and light. Okay, I've got that prepared and I'm going to be painting around this leaf. Now the other thing, so I can move a little closer for you if I do that and zoom in. That'll be a little better, won't it? A little better. There. Okay. And the camera is focused. Wonderful. So I've got a light tone. I've got a mid-tone, but I want to be able to drop in another colour. So do I stick to my limited palette and um, just include that brown? It did make a beautiful green. Or do I think about... Um, I've totally dumped my... <laughs> I've totally dumped that tube of paint and <laughs> all right, I'm definitely not adding Vulcan Brown because I've just thrown it somewhere. Oh, something did fall down when I was um, moving stuff. Right, okay. Uh, oops, Julie says, no worries. Excellent. Watch it later. That'd be tops, Julie. I've got this colour, this colour. What other colour? Oh, bloody hell, it's sitting here. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that on YouTube Live. Here's the brown. Sit. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> We're sitting there the whole time. Okay, there's phthalo turquoise. I'll make it a little more phthalo-y. And oopsie, I'm going to get a third brush. I like this method of using lots and lots of colours. Right, there we've got the incredibly thick version. And I'm going to wash that off. Wash that off. And over here, I'm going to make a really thin version. Oh, maybe add a little bit of halo turquoise to it. Okay. And then I've got three colours. Here's my first glazing colour. It is easier to glaze with a light colour. You'll find that painting with a really lovely watery glaze is easier. Come down. Now I'm going to stop every couple of minutes to... Every couple of minutes, probably every couple of centimetres would be a better way to describe it. While it's beautiful and wet, dump that brush, grab another colour, drop it in to that background, maybe some there, maybe some turquoise can go in there, there, there. All right, while I've got that exact colour on my brush, I'm going to do the little holes as well. A little bit too watery. I could have used a much smaller brush or wiped off more paint. Just trying to deliver a small amount of paint there. Okay, keep going as fast as you can because I don't want a line there. So I'm turning my head to the side so that I can see where my pencil mark is, because down in this section here, it's quite hard 
to see where it is. Keep coming down, keep coming down. And while it's beautiful and wet, as fast as you can, dropping in another colour and another colour into there. Go back to the lovely watery glaze. Looking at it on the side, I can see where I've drawn my pencil mark. Pencil, pencil, pencil. And it goes over there. So I'm going to finish this off, as in finish off this sector of the glaze. And then I'll have a moment to add more colour. Finishing this sector, this sector, and straight in with some lovely wet in wet. And here's the turquoise. Let's put some down there. All right, while this colour is still lovely and light on my palette, I'm going to paint the border. And that's going to make the border pop. And I can paint it along here as well, fast as I can. I think I'll keep going with that. It's going to be a bit of luck as to whether or not it will um, go under that tape. But I've done the best I can. Going up there and then I'm going to paint this one. You can, um, if you're using a big palette where all the colours mix together, it's quite easy to lose the colour and that's why I'm painting this border as soon as I can. I know I already painted that but I couldn't really see it. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the other side. Ideally, what I would do is um, rotate my uh, board around so that I can get, have more access, access to this side, but that's not possible with <laughs> the way I've got my table up for YouTube Live. So I'm just going to have to compensate, and it may mean a little less wet in wet. I'll put a little extra bit there. I know that I hadn't drawn it. I'm just going to invent stuff as I draw. So it will be a little bit harder for me to do wet in wet on that side. Glazing as gently as I possibly can and continually keeping this lovely line moist as you move down the page. It's really important that you don't get a hard line in your background, though it's quite possible with this subject it might be quite forgiving, but uh, you can see I'm not able to stop and because it's harder for me to paint on this side I'm not quite as fast and that goes right into the edge of the leaf. So I'm just focusing on the glaze instead. That's okay and the leaf comes down here. And that way I have managed a glaze. Now I'm going to switch to a little tiny rigger and put in the, I'm going to wet it first, collect some of that pale glaze and put in a little bit of a vein. And I'm trying to press really lightly. and I'm doing a broken line. All right, do I want any extra little marks? I can see that I mucked up the glaze just there, uh, which will help me just determine where the next leaf goes. <laughs> now, where do I want more? I've got the perfect colour because it matches the background colour. So do I want to put in another little hole or has it got enough? Mm, I guess rid of that excess and put in one on the little wonky one. Because Sometimes they do start in the centre and go out. Some of this phthalo turquoise did not go into the hole, so I'm just going to get a tiny bit to try and match it up with the outside colour. If I was watching someone doing this 
and could see that they were about to do it, I think I might have advised them not to because <laughs> it's, it's half wet on the outside. It's one of those, don't do that because you'll get a uh, little back run there. Okay, I need to swap back to this little sweetie and just think about it for a moment. The tape is completely coming off. Do I continue with this one being um, a drawing one or do I paint it negatively as I was thinking that I would? I really love this blue here. I might just take a little sneak peek. Has it made a mark? Not really. It's going to just give it the tiniest little um, abstract mark. So I think what I might do is paint the borders on that one. So I'm just going to let this dry for a minute. Put this here and move my camera so you can see. That's better. There and zoom. Can you see? Yes. I think because this has gone in the direction of drawing that I should actually just um, continue drawing, except for the fact that I liked the idea that it was going to get a border. So I'm going to tape that, tape that, tape that. Put the tape down again. The other thing that happens that you'll work out in YouTube Live is that I change direction all the time depending on how I feel the painting is um, taking me. I'm going to start with those borders and um, I might just use, do I want, I'm loving that blue. I think I'm going to use blue. I think there's more than enough um, green there, so I'm going to use blue. This blue would be the mostly made up of the phthalo turquoise, but I'm going to paint instead in cerulean chromium. So I do stick to a limited palette all the time, except when I feel like it needs some other color. Uh, now, is it light enough? I'm going to tape it there, a little bit more water, go a little lighter and put in this border. Oh, the white pencil resisted my paint, that's beautiful. And interesting, that is an opportunity to explore what the white pencil does. It res is resisting it a little bit like a um, wax down here. Paint the, this one comes out here. Just going to paint these borders and this is between the two leaves here and over there. Hopefully these borders are going to look quite interesting. This one isn't going to have a double border. It's going to have a single border. Oh, maybe it will have a double border. Maybe I changed my mind on that one too. Interesting. That side. Coming up here. Coming right up to the top. A little bit more. Trying to keep it consistent so that the border has a similar color all the way around. A bit more. I think it's a little watery over there. Right, that would be better. Corner. And this side will be easy because there's no leaves over there. So love the idea that I might put more tape inside, but it, I think it's too small to do that. I think what I will do is I will negatively paint it. Uh, and I think that blue is looking beautiful. 
So with this cerulean chromium, I'm going to add a little of that green. So I'll change it in the middle and um, maybe I'll just do some painting at the top here. Okay. So it's a different colour to the border. Hopefully that'll look cool. That's the white starts there somewhere. <laughs> it's hard to see the white. Just being quite careful. That's all the stem of the leaf there that I'm trying to avoid painting. And definitely this little spot up here. And that means I need to go over here. Trying to be even and consistent. Trying not to lose my fluid line. Trying to glaze so that the top glaze is moving consistently and not going, trying really hard not to go back in to any areas. To any areas of the glaze, apologies for not finishing talking then. It's really hard when I'm concentrating to talk at the same time. Okay, that's nicely come in there. I think that's better. I think that now I can see that this green needs to be popped as well. So same colour, I think, or the green, or will I change it a little more? Mm, I'll add some of this beautiful green into the mix. I think I'll add a little more of that chromium to go back to the blue side. Right. So this paint that on my brush now is much thicker and when you're doing a glaze, it is so much harder to paint with thick paint. It just doesn't glide at the same rate. That's just the only reason and therefore you can get more backgrounds quite easily. So forgive me while, <laughs> forgive me if I stop talking while I'm painting because I'm really focusing on keeping the paint moving. I'm also trying not to lose those beautiful marks where the pencil, white pencil on the left and the crayon on the right, where it shifted the paint and it's like it's gone back to the beautiful paper but there's a stain of the green so the lines are beautiful. All right. I'm doing all of this while the other one is drying. I might need to dry it with the dryer in a moment. I think um, there's not that much more that I would do to it. I do like the idea that I make this one pop a little more. The white is making it hard to tell where it goes and where it doesn't go. So if I knock back this white here, 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 that will make this main leaf that's on the top come forward. So I need a different colour. So do I go just quinacridone gold? There's some beautiful quinacridone gold just sitting over here. Yeah, okay, wash this brush. I've got this lovely pale glaze there and it'll be subtle. And that will really make this leaf pop, I think. And, okay, as soon as you start one, it leads to the next. I'm trying to keep within the bounds because it's wet on the outside. This leaf comes down here. There, there, 
and there. Yeah, you can see this lift much better now. Oh, it's quite lovely. The quinacrinone gold is, is really nice what it's done to the background leaf. I'm going to say that one is done. This one isn't quite dry. I'm going to remove the tape on this one. It might be a little too early. If you're more careful than me, then wait by all means. And I'm going to forge ahead though and remove it and then you can see it straight away. What it's going to look like. Lots of paint went under the tape there. Just getting rid of those bits of paint, tape. And up here is the last one. Okay, it's got a single border, but it's quite interesting. The border has worked sufficiently for it to be a border. Uh, and it's almost like a version of a double border because there's a border and then a border and the leaves cross all of the borders. I don't mind that as a lovely little abstract leaf, gum leaf thing. Mm, pretty cool. Okay, I can leave this one here. It'll just be off screen. I need to know if this is dry enough. Nope, okay, grab the dryer again. I use a heat gun. I find that a heat gun blows the paint around less. A hairdryer really blows everything around. So that's why I prefer a heat gun. And I'm keeping it away from the tape because the other thing that a heat gun does is remove masking tape. If you find you've got some old sticky masking tape, the um, heat gun is a brilliant way to just get it off your page easily. Okay, is that dry enough? Oh, yeah. Just get rid of the heat gun. Okay, it's quite hot. <laughs> now, I've drawn in this leaf, and um, maybe I'll now play with the white pencil because that was quite interesting what it did on this border here where it resisted it. Going to go to the other leaf. I'm going to use the white pencil. If you don't like the white watercolor pencil idea, you could easily just grab your pencil and draw in a second and a third leaf, how many ever leaves. Or you might be really happy with what you've got going there. Um, you get to choose. You are always in control. So I've got one leaf that way, and I was thinking that I would cross them this way. This way, this way. I thought it. I wouldn't do the same. But what's beautiful about this one is is the big one in the background. So maybe I start up high and go down into there. Maybe I go this way. Maybe maybe I go that way. Maybe I go that way. Uh, that'll leave a big gap over here, and I don't really want that to be left. I like this part of the leaf. It's just worth taking your time while you decide where things are going to go. So if this stalk goes off at that point, one of the things you might want to avoid is having the stalk match it. So I definitely don't want it over there. I could have it come in from here and that's nice and different and then it goes off this edge and it goes off two edges but I kind of liked the idea that I might see the point of this side so do I go that way I think I'm going to swap leaves I think it's too big this way all right, done. I'm going to use white pencil because I want to explore what it's going to do. I've had the idea. So now I'm going to, I'm just going to begin by tracing. 
and then switch to drawing. So there's my line. This is going to come down here. I think that'll just go straight up and then in to there. And then this one comes in, you can touch it, go right into the, and to there. And the other side comes down and it's going to curve in, go up into there, there. And it's going to go over here and have some more wonky bits and that can be the the vein will come down there into that bit and down there and over there I'm loving the white okay that is great very tempting to get another color and draw another one in red. Ooh, because that is, color is reading a lot like red. Um, red, red, oh, I've got this beautiful magenta. I keep little bits of sandpaper in with my pencils for doing lovely bits of texture. I'll do that in a moment. Tammy says, I like there is one leaf with white and one without. Me too. Thank you. And it's making, it separated them out quite nicely. I'm going to draw another leaf. So I've got one here, one here. I'm going to put that one there to remind me of the design in that way. So do I do a third one up there? Yeah, do I do a third one down here? Like that. Okay. I'm going to have all the sticks up here. I don't want this to be equidistant. For example, that would make that space very similar to that space. So I either take it even further over to there or I go really close to there. Now, will this, oh, yeah, and this point can stay. Okay, so I'm going to use the leaf as my stencil again to get me started. It goes down there around there. I'm just doing the flat bits because they're easy and then down to the point. Okay, take this off. It was behind there. Now this one gets into here and then this one's really jagged. It goes right into the middle. Jaggedy, jaggedy down here. There's the point. Come back up. Wow, the red line is beautiful. The stem, I'm just going to put the stem in so I can determine what the other side of the line will be like. Stem, break the line, stem. Right, I need a stem there. Put in a, yeah, I will put in the other side because there's an opportunity to go behind. And a little bit there. Okay, what does it need now? It's got three leaves. Do I go for another leaf? Do I, oh, the red, I just am loving the red. I could just release the red or I could paint it with red. I could put a bit of red up there. Those colours have a Christmas feel, don't they? Thanks, Viv, they really do. I love red and green. I do that all the time. And I have the most brilliant idea for a Christmas um leaf card that I've been thinking about in the background. Uh, right, so I think it needs a little bit of red up there. So will it be a red? I don't want to do a leaf. I think I will. Now, if I were to, <laughs> Liz says my choice exactly. 
Uh, magenta, yeah, it's a beautiful colour, isn't it? It goes with everything, that magenta. I use it like a red. So if I just release this magenta pencil, as in get a wet brush and run it along the edge, it will release, but more likely I will um, also be releasing in order, because I'll have to put a bit of pressure on that red to get it to release, and so I won't... Um, get just the um, pencil releasing, I will get the uh, background moving as well. So I want to keep that background intact. So I'm going to go to my palette on zoom out so you can see my palette there because you need to be able to see magenta. There is magenta. Go that way and in that way. All right, and it's focused. This is this point in my um, palette indicates a pure red. For me, a pure red is quinacridone. You are talking my language. Now you are talking my language. What do you mean? <laughs> That's gorgeous. So this is my, my idea of a pure red, and this is I got this idea completely from S Stephen Quiller because this is his palette. Uh, is quinacridone rose or permanent rose. So coming this way, uh, colours that are a touch warmer. So this here is magenta and this is magenta. I don't know why I have two spots for it. There might be two different brands. I might have been doing um, a, uh, a practice with a different brand. Cards. Oh, yeah, I love making cards. Uh, so I'm going to reactivate this magenta reactivates like an absolute dream and then if I put a little bit there what's going to happen there's all these colors moving into it it's like I've reactivated I'm just going to grab a tissue and stop the green this palette actually is quite level that those colors were moving uh, because of the chemical reactions that were occurring there okay Magenta, a little more water. Let's get a pale version up here. Yeah. So if you start with a pale version, you can always go darker. All right. Let's take the risk. Let's just start putting it in. This brush is a little small for this job, but I am not stopping in the middle. There you go. I made the right decision because the... Magenta pencil is not activating with just that tiny little touch. That means, as I had guessed, that I would have had to have been pressing much harder and moving the background. And part of the beauty of glazing is that you leave the background intact. Uh-oh, I'm going to have to go around the corner. Didn't think that through. Oh, well, keep going. Just keep going up to here. I'm going to have to re-glaze around that complex bit just here as fast as I can. Done. I didn't, it's going to um, dry weirdly here. The pencil does the funniest thing. It um, starts to uh, like leak something out that is going to push my colour around. So I'm hoping that's going to be beautiful. Having done that bit, I need to do this bit. And I'm going to, ooh, shall I paint the border? Yeah. One big experiment after another today. Sometimes I know exactly what I'm doing and sometimes I'm just in one of those wonderfully creative moods and I can be thinking and problem solving creatively. Just this is the right brush for that stem just to carefully paint around it. Haha, <laughs> that looks interesting. I do have this enormous urge. Oh, I just noticed a bit I did not get in there. I've just had this enormous urge to add the red up there. But I wonder if it's actually going to be really interesting because it's dark there and light there. 
Will it be better? Will it be more interesting? Mm, I'm feeling like I need to paint this, that's for sure. Okay, more water. Okay, I'd love anyone to comment and um, suggest. Will I glaze this with the same pale, pale magenta? I'm going to paint this border down here and across the bottom. Yes, Liz, thanks. I wanted a guide. Thank you. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get more of this. Thank you, Liz. Sometimes I just need a push. I'm going to paint these borders first because they're easy. Border, come down, stop at the leaf. Border, start at the leaf, come down to the leaf. Start at the leaf, come down to the border. Uh oh, I can feel that tape it just moved. Now, I think I'll leave a little gap next to this. And again, I'm glazing, so I'm trying to be as light as I can in my touch. And then fill in. Fill in, fill in, fill in. Fill in. Place and then fill in the edge as carefully as I can. It's a really, really pale clay, so it is it is changing the colour in a beautiful way. Magenta is beautiful and transparent. Transparent colours are always wonderful for glazes as well if you're wondering about which colour. And I did a review on a book called Making Colour Sing where she lists all the transparent colours. <laughs> Liz says she's nervous because I took her advice. Oh, I haven't painted that bit. Damn it, I just washed my brush. No, it's all right. I've got plenty here. <laughs> uh, okay, this bit. The interesting thing about uh, videoing your art is that I'll be able to go back and go um, and work out. I'll have the before and after. You'll have the before and after to work out whether or not it was a good decision. So that's the leaf there. I don't want to paint. I've painted that. That's the leaf. That's the leaf. I was just very tempted to paint that bit there. Oh, I'm touching the wet. Oh, interesting. I think that this needs to be outlined like the others. Oh, it's turned into a watercolour pencil day. What? Or, oh, maybe I should do it with the um, that beautiful green. <gasps> okay, I'm going to go and find this. It actually, the uh, Winsor & Newton crayon actually had quite a lovely edge on it okay for my final act while it's still wet I'm going to outline the leaf it's giving it quite a thick line which if I recall correctly I said I didn't want but I think it's wonderful to just make decisions on the fly And uh, if they work out, excellent. If they don't work out, oh well, I'll have learnt something for the next time. Uh-oh, I just made a big mess of that. Okay, crayon, yeah, a bit hard for outlining something that already exists. So next time I do this, I won't use a crayon. The pencil was much easier. That's quite light. I might leave that there. Oh, there's this eaten bit here. I'm going to outline the eaten bit. Although I want to switch to a pencil, I just know I'm not going to have a pencil that's the exact same colour as this. So, oops, I totally went outside the line. Live dangerously. Thanks, Viv. That's a brilliant thing to do. Why not, hey? 
All right, I think it's time to take off the tape. I'm going to dry it because uh, this one I'm hoping is going to look even better than this one. I'm going to dry it so that that tape um, removes like a dream and it is much better. Oh, I must wash my brush before I do that. Not sit it there. That's how you ruin your handles. A little bit about how you ruin your bristles slowly. Okay, final drying. It's only going to take us a quick second. Very, very quick because it's near dry. It might be that the tape comes off and then um, I need to add a few more details or it might be that the border just does a wonderful job on its own. By that I mean that it Ow, that it makes the painting even more interesting. Okay. Right, now I'll be able to decide how I'm going in terms of, oh man. <laughs> Oh, it's made a really big mess. Ugh. And because um, the, oh, really, really big shame. Really, really big shame because this border is beautiful. So I wonder, was my paint, was my paper a tiny bit dry and that's why it didn't grab beautifully. I've painted many, many paintings using masking tape as the frame and not had it as bad as this. Is it because when I've had success with the tape I was using um, cold press? Is, is this about hot press? Is it? I don't paint on hot press. Is this about rough textured that I will always get this happening on rough textured um, paper? There's a video in itself for me to explore that question about different types because uh, I've been using the same tape for quite a while. This is a Bunnings tape. It's called, it's from Bunnings, not a Bunnings tape. It's called Bear and I find it really good but I have been painting a lot lately on cold pressed paper. Anyway, here are the two paintings. I'm just going to shift my camera and make that final decision about whether or not is it done. I'll zoom in a little bit more. more. All right. I love the idea of painting two at one time because um, if you're lucky they end up, they are actually the same size. I'm just moving them so they're you can see that. Sometimes it's quite lovely if to paint two together for a number of reasons. Firstly, uh, I find it makes me looser, so I'm switching attention from this one to that one. Also, it um, allows ideas to flow from this one to, the, to that one. Um, it's also fast. Oh, there's three reasons. <laughs> uh, so I think I am preferring this one. I think um, that lovely white line there is beautifully drawing me in and then the red line is drawing me down. I think I loved elements of this and I loved um, some of this beautiful white being left that was on the original monotype. That's the technical term for the, the way we did our backgrounds today. It's a printmaking term. Printmakers do that all the time, put down some oil, put some paint paper down on top and um, uh, <laughs> Tammy says, I love how they turn out even with the paint creeping under the tape. Yeah, maybe it gives it a loose look. I think if, if it had been tight, I think that uh, I would have really loved this one. But uh, everything is a lovely experiment for me. I just 
have such a deep desire to constantly create. And so I've been working on smaller and smaller pieces of um, paper and spending more and more time on this YouTube channel. And I think this is the way of the future for me. Um, so I can't thank you enough, Tammy, Liz, Viv, uh, Julie had to go. Um, I really appreciate that you joined me this morning. That's absolutely wonderful. There's some other people who've joined me uh, as well, I can see. So please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It makes a difference for other people to watch, to know that the video is worth watching. And then the other thing that does is tell YouTube to promote my video. And uh, then I will continue to create more videos like this and do more live streams because it does give you this opportunity to ask questions. And um, the other thing that I've got, got going at the moment, uh, I've YouTube have allowed, because I've got enough subscribers, YouTube have allowed me to offer super thanks. So I don't know whether you've seen that on other people's um, channels, but you can go in and offer super thanks. And if you start, if it, you, you can like say super thanks with any amount that you want, but those people who start to offer super thanks are going to be the people that I will start to say, what would you like me to paint next? Or um, what subject would you like? Or what method would you like? And uh, if it's something that I know I can do well, then that's something that I will um, definitely uh, investigate further. Uh, Liz says, I quite like the effect of the paint creeping under baby tiny caterpillars. <laughs> I love that thought. I love that thought. The caterpillars ate the leaf and then uh, gave me some um, texture. And Tammy says, yes, lovely abstract frame to go with the abstract artwork. Wonderful. I can't thank you enough, guys, for tuning in and chatting. That was absolutely marvellous. Thanks so much. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm back teaching uh, at uh, the community college. So I won't be doing it next Wednesday, but I might try and find another day that it suits. And I'll do the same thing where I announce it on Instagram and um, and Facebook so that you can join in. And it will pretty much always be at 9.30 in the morning. So if you check your Instagram and face and or Facebook, then that will be able to tell you. The other thing I'd love to do is post some photographs so that we can all work from the same photographs. So thank you so much, guys. Oh, lovely. Thanks, Liz. Excellent. That's wonderful. And uh, thanks for the extra thumbs up. That's really, really cool. Hey, so hopefully I'll see you next week live. If not, I'll see you um, via your comments on my videos. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.